So now I've got my little edit done, I want to get it out of Mink and take it somewhere else. I could just export it as a file. Now you might think you go to File and then Export, but it's not up there. There is an option to upload it, which would export a file and upload it to somewhere like YouTube or Facebook. But actually, if you want to export a storyboard, what you've got to do is get that details playing back that we used to have here. So I'm just going to click on that button and this pane will come back. And now you can see you've got details of your storyboard. So what it's called, which, you know, I called it interview. I could change it to something else. I can stick in comments about it, whatever. I can change the master volume. I can change the format. So at the moment, I started this off without even thinking what the format would be. I just dragged some clips in and started to lay it all out. I could have guessed that it's doing it at something like 2997 because the time code up here has got a little semicolon in it, which is what you normally see for a drop frame time code. I'm not using 2997 clips. Mine are actually 50p. So first thing I've got to do is I've got to change the format of this timeline to something else. That's what this will do. Click on that and you get an option for lots of different formats. I'm going to click on an HD 2550 setting and then I'm going to choose that one because that matches what my clips were. But obviously it didn't change the format of the storyboard to match the clips. The other little buttons up here, if I click on the second one, it actually goes back to giving me details of whatever clip I'm looking at. Which is what we had when we were looking at this as a browser. But the third one lets you export it. Click on that and you basically have an option to export it. It only does one type of file. It only does MP4 files. And you've really only got three settings, high, normal, or web. So I'm exporting an H.264 file, either at a high bit rate or an average bit rate. 24 megabits is roughly the bit rate that a good AVCHD camera would do. 12 megabits obviously makes smaller files, so it's better to upload, but you might squeeze it a bit. I'm just gonna go for normal. And the only other option you've got is whether you stick the final clip back into the library or not. But all you do is choose that, choose export, tell it where it's going to go, let it do it. Now that's going to make me an H.264 file of that storyboard. You can't do other formats, it literally is just an MP4 H.264 file. Because all that kind of stuff is what you generally do in your editing program. But yeah, if you want to get it out, you can do that. The other option I did mention is you can go upload and this will make an mp4 file and then upload it to a website. So I click on that and it says, okay, you haven't got any settings in there. Oh, well, I'm gonna to have to open the settings and then I'm gonna to have to add in an account. So you can see you've got Facebook and YouTube and all the rest of it. Let's go to YouTube. And then you can see you've just basically got to sign into your YouTube account, which will then authorize the program to upload to it. Not gonna do that now, but that's your other option. Actually, what I want to do most of the time is not export it from here. I, in fact, want to take it off to an editing program. If you're exporting to an editing program, you're doing one of two things. You're going to EDIUS or you're going to something else. Let's first look at what happens if I use EDIUS. So I am just going to open up EDIUS. I'm going to make up a new project, which let's call this. And I'm going to tick customize and change the frame rate to 50 so that it actually matches the clips and I've got EDIUS open at the same time as having Mink open. Now if you've got EDIUS the easiest way to get a storyboard into EDIUS is actually use the source browser because the source browser can see exactly what you've got catalogued inside of Mink. So I'm going to click on the source browser and this is how you would bring in all sorts of different types of footage you know XD cam and all the rest of it. Down the bottom you have Mink. So Mink here has actually got whatever's been catalogued inside of Mink. So for example, if I go to video, you'll notice it's got all those video clips that I've catalogued. Or I could look at a smart catalog, which has just got like the planes in. Or I could look at that catalog called basics that I made up. Basically everything that is in Mink, you can now bring in through here. I'm gonna to go to storyboard. And to bring it in is very easy. You can right click, add it to bin. You can add it to the timeline, or you can just drag it to the timeline or drag it into the bin. So let me just drag it in there. Now you see that's come in, it's come in as a timeline. And if I double click on it, you can see that's actually got the edit. Complete with all the audio tracks I had and everything else. If I was to take it to the bin, which let's just right click on it and say add it to the bin. Go and look at the bin. Oh, there we are, there's my storyboard. I could double click on it, open it up, and there it is. Now that's by far the easiest way to get something out of Mink into EDIUS.
If I go back to Mink, you'll notice that under the file menu, there is an export to Edius. It's where you think, oh, I'd do that. I'd export that to Edius. Nope. If Mink is on the same system as Edius, it's a lot simpler to go to the source browser and just drag it in. This XML thing that it's mentioning, XML is a particular way of sharing projects between editing programs. And it's very good, and I use it between all sorts of editing programs, but it's not perfect, and sometimes it doesn't work 100%. You could use that, and you could bring that into Edius, but if you're on the same system, you're much better off, very simply, just to go to the source browser and then bring it in. This timeline here has no relationship to that storyboard now, so if I was to start trimming it, it doesn't change the storyboard back in Mink. And the same thing, if I was to come into Mink and say, add in another clip. So I've now added that onto the bottom. Come back to Edius. It hasn't updated there either. It hasn't updated either version that I brought in. On the other hand, if I bring it in again, then I have an updated version. It obviously has got that long clip at the end. So why do we have these options that say export to Edius? It's because you might actually have Mink on a system and that's all you have and you want to export it to somebody else to use in a different program. It says export to Edius, but this is the way you could export this rough edit to most programs. If something will import an FCP, so that's Final Cut Pro, if somebody will import an FCP style XML, which a lot of programs do, then this is a way of getting the edit out of Mink and into something else. This is one of the reasons you can use Mink with lots of different programs. You don't have to have Edius. Obviously, it's nicer with Edius because you just bring it in through the source browser. But if you don't have Edius, if you have Premiere or something, you can use that XML to get into Premiere. So the fact it says export to Edius, it should say export to editing program, I guess. The reason you might use this with Edius is Mink is on your laptop and then you want to take it and you want to put this edit onto a desktop. Well, you can't just drag it in from the source browser because your Mink is on a different computer to Edius. To get to Edius on a different computer or to get to Premiere or something, choose Export XML and either with or without media files. I'm going to take the one off the bottom there, make it a bit quicker. So I'm going to go File, Export, Export FCPM, blah, blah, blah. It gives it a name, you go Bosch, and that's exported it. Now I want to bring that into an editing program. So first of all, I could bring it into Edius. Imagine this is a different computer. I'm going to simply go up to File and then Import Project FCPXML. Now what that does, as I can see, it brings it in, brings in the audio and the video. You can see I've still got all the cuts there. It looks slightly different to this version. So for a start, you'll notice the first clip there, which was actually a surround sound clip. When I did a direct import into Edius, it kept the surround sound. When I do an XML, it comes in with just two audio tracks. And that's the left and the right audio track, and they're actually split up into two different tracks. Because XMLs basically work on single mono audio tracks for everything. Again, that wasn't quite as good as just dragging it in from the source browser, which brought it in exactly. Second thing, obviously I've got VA tracks here. This video here is on a VA track, it really ought to be on a V track, because I haven't got any A with it. Whereas this one brought it in nicely and just put V's and A's tracks in as needed. But it worked, it brought the edit in. What about if I use another program? So let me just get Edius out the way and open up Premiere. I'm using the current version of Premiere, which has just been updated at the time I'm doing this video. All I'm gonna do is make up a new project. Let's call it Mink. And then do a file and then import. There we are, it's now brought the stuff in, put the clips into the bin. That is the timeline. I mean, if you know Premiere, you know these represent the fact that's a video clip. That's saying it's a sequence. Open it up, there we are. You can see I've got my edit inside of Premiere. And it worked, and there we are. I've got the edit that I did in Mink. Nice and simple. I could, for example, use DaVinci Resolve, which also imports XMLs. So let me make up a new project, open it up, go file, import XML, same thing as before. This is the standard box, I generally say yes to that. And, oh, that worked. That worked except there's no sound. Why is there no sound? 
It's because Resolve doesn't actually import sound from AVCHD clips. So it's brought in an empty hole, ready for the sound, but didn't bring the sound in. That's not Mink's fault, that's Resolve's fault. Resolve just doesn't load up AVCHD clips. Resolve, it's got a lot of nice stuff going for it, but there are lots of file formats it will not load up. And so if you export an XML out of Mink that has got formats like AVI files, for example, that uh, Resolve won't accept, then you'll open it up in Resolve and you'll have a clip where there should be a piece of video, but there won't be any video because Resolve doesn't load it. There are loads of programs that will load up XMLs. Like I say, Edius, Premiere, Resolve, they all do it. So basically you've used Mink to catalog the clips, do a rough edit, and then you send the rough edit off to somebody else to finish it off. You'll also notice that the two options there are XML or XML and media files. So if I chose that, it'll do exactly the same thing, but it'll take the clips with it. It'll do direct copies of them. What it won't do is to trim them, so it'll take the entire clip. It's not something that's going to actually just use the bit that's on the timeline. But it'll take them off and then you'd have the files that you're using and the edit and then you can load that up into something else. The final thing worth pointing out about XMLs is that there are sometimes they won't load into EDIUS. So, for example, I've started off a new project here and this project is 1920-1080-25p. Now, if you remember, my footage was 1920, 1080p. Let's just try and import that XML again. Didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because the timeline does not match the frame rate. So basically, you can't bring in a 50p XML into a 25p project, or you can't bring in an NTSC one into a PAL project. What you could do is you could try changing the setting here. So I'm going to select that and then change it to 25p. Then I'm going to export it. Then I'm going to go to my 25p project and try and import it. And it works. So even though the clips were 50p clips, it'll still bring them into a 25p project if you get the setting right. If you've got EDIUS and MINK on the same system, it's not a problem. It won't be an issue at all because I'll just, again, use the source browser and then bring that in and it doesn't matter, it doesn't care at all. It's only if you're using an XML that you might come across that. But if you do come across it, the way around it is come back in here to change the format of the storyboard and then redo the XML. Like I said, Premiere doesn't seem to have such a problem when it's loading up XMLs. It doesn't actually matter if the XML matches the project because Premiere can have different sequences of different settings. Only problem is that Premiere a lot of the time gets it wrong. So if we have a quick look at the sequence settings for this timeline it created, oh, it's completely wrong. It's done it at 2997. So what I need to do is to change that to be 1920, 1080 and square pixels. And now it's happy. So it didn't have an issue with the format that it was bringing in. It's just got the format wrong. Have a quick look in Resolve. Click on the project settings. Oh, well, that set the format up correctly at 50p. So obviously that's Premiere's fault for bringing the XML in slightly wrong, but at least you could change it afterwards. So that's given you a quick run through of Mink and the storyboarding. Like I said, it is basically the Grass Valley browser with a different name and available as a standalone program. So if you're looking for other tutorials, I've got quite a lot more information about Mink in the EDIUS 8 tutorial video that I've done, which you can buy from the dvctraining.co.uk website. There's also a lot of other videos on our YouTube channel which explain different areas to do with the Grass Valley browser. And if you do find any other tutorials about the Grass Valley browser, will they apply to Mink as well? Because it basically is that program with a new name and with some new features. I think it's a great little cataloging program. I do use it quite a lot. Sometimes I just use it just to look at video clips on the hard drive because I can't see them in other ways. And well worth looking into, even if you're not using EDIUS as your editing program. If you want to see more videos from DVC Training, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on our Facebook page. You can also contact me by email. Just email david at dvctraining.co.uk.